Thank you. Thank you. Well, Pam, thanks for uh, joining us today. Happy to be here. Thank you very much. Um, you know, one of the reasons that we like to host events like this is to really highlight private equity's role um, in supporting pensions and pensioners uh, around the country. Uh, there are approximately 5,000 private equity firms that are all competing to invest and partner with pension funds. And Riverside, where Pam um, is the vice chair, is really focused on small businesses and dealing and, and does a lot of work with pensions. So Pam, maybe you could explain a little bit um, what the relationship is between Riverside and the pension funds you work with. Sure. Um, about today we manage over $14 billion and about a third of that money comes from pension funds. And those pension funds are everywhere from Maine to California. And we partner very closely with all of our investors. In fact, one of the core values at Riverside is investors first because we're in a very competitive environment and we often say that raising capital is like survival of the fittest because if you don't do what you say you're gonna do and you don't deliver something that is asked of you, you don't raise your next fund. Um, also, some of, our, some of our state pension funds in particular really like to co-invest alongside us. So when there's an in-state deal, we will show that to them. And we've had states from Oregon, states like Texas, where there have been in-state companies and we have shown them those deals and, and occasionally they co-invest with us. Well, I, th I think that brings us to the, the point of our, uh, uh, you might need your, uh, of our apparently my mic is not working uh, so. <laughs> of our our report I mean and one of the things that we were here to highlight today is the fact that the pension returns we do this annual study right. and this past year we had a 15 percent average return over 10 years uh, for pension for the private equity investment in pension funds across America and if you think about how important this is you know, we all know that pension funds are struggling to meet their obligations around the country. And we have 30 million Americans that are dependent on these retirement uh, benefits. You've got firefighters, you have policemen, you have teachers. We're going to have Faruqi from Ohio coming up, and he's got his fund covers janitors, cafeteria workers, bus drivers. All these people are dependent on these returns in order to have a comfortable uh, retirement. And for us being able to deliver year after year one of the best investment performances for private equity inside of a pension fund is really an amazing achievement. And I think we have to continue to do a really good job of explaining that. And I think one of the things that uh, we always talk about is like, how does that happen? And that happens because you have active managers like Pam and Riverside and other companies really working with these small businesses. And if you, you know, Pam at Riverside, they only invest in small businesses. 74% of our dollars go to small businesses. So Pam, explain a little bit about how this works with the companies you, you interact with. Absolutely, I, th I think it's interesting because you know, Senator Toomey made the comment that the active management, the intellectual provision that private equity provides to these, the 74% of, I mean, I only can talk about small businesses because it's all we do. But just to give you a couple of examples, because I always think stories are better than anything, than, than statistics. Um, you know, we invested in an Ohio-based company called N2Y. It was discovered by, a, it was created by a teacher who noticed that in the public schools there was no curricula for children who are on the learning disabled spectrum, particularly those on the autism spectrum. And so she created a company that did that. And when she wanted to retire, she really wanted to pass the company to her daughter, but the daughter had never been the CEO of a company. So we were able to help coach that daughter through how do you be the CEO of what's now a pretty big company. In a similar example, we made an investment in a company called OnScent, or OnScent and it's a manufacturer of fragrances for the cosmetic industry largely. And it has struggled mightily with supply chain and cost issues. In fact, the CPI numbers just came out and it's a 
um, number. So that is really high. And we helped that company to both segment its client base and figure out like what is the right pricing strategy according to what fragrance you're buying. This is the type of thing that we do. And that company's results are a three and a half percent increase in sales through June. And that's what the bus drivers and janitors and teachers need to see because that's the thing that's going to, that growth is what is going to drive returns for them. I mean, you highlight the challenges that we have in, you know, with 9.1% uh, inflation, um, supply chain challenges. All while this is going on right now, you have regulators uh, in Washington, the SEC, the FTC, and others that are are issuing thousands of pages of new regulations that will impact how investment dollars flow, how funds operate. Um, you're a small fund. You invest in small businesses. Tell me, how does these new proposed regulations, how are they going to impact how you all operate? Well, what worries me is a small company like the one I just described, Onsent, they you know, they're really struggling with their supply chain and their cost issues. So how is a company like that then also going to add another layer of reporting um, so that so that somebody can read it or put it in a room somewhere and never look at it again? I don't know that that's going to help all of the teachers and policemen who are relying on us for returns. I mean, because what we're trying to do is to grow our companies and you know, perhaps we're not reporting the way people would like us to, but but I think we are. Um, we've never had a situation where any of our partner investors are unhappy with the reports they get. Anybody wants anything, they can get it from us. And in fact, I think you actually, or I think there was a, a study recently, a, a poll recently of a bunch of CIOs. Yeah, I think the, that's right, that most of the, the um, pension funds believe that the existing relationship works. And I think only 6% said that there needs to be more regulation in the industry. And I think, you know, this report sort of is proof positive that, you know, a 15% average return over 10 years means it's working. So let's not disrupt what's already working. I think it's important that, and for what I think you're saying, Pam, is I think it's important that the resources that these funds use or should be dedicated to the companies that they're investing in and they're and they're working with and not investing in hiring more lawyers to send more paperwork to washington 100 it's the it's it's both the resource cost and the opportunity cost do i want my people spending time you know segmenting the client right. base so we can figure out the right pricing strategy or reporting right now that's right pam thank you for being here today here's to Pleasure. big returns Here's next to year. big returns. All right. <laughs> Thank you.